Are you ready? Yep, I think we're About good to time. go. Let's go! For sure. You got this. Social <laughs> <laughs> distancing. Okay. How do you think I should start? Good morning. That's a good one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello and welcome. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Alrighty, we got this. Hello and welcome to The Morning Show here on Get Active TV. I'm Kelly. And I'm Barbara and this is your new morning routine. I hope you're ready for a whole hour of us. Oh, I don't think you're ready for a whole <laughs> hour of us. Don't worry though, we've got lots of bits in between and we're just help you, we're gonna help you guide through this new normal and hopefully break up the day with a little bit of a stretch. Also give you some active health insights as well as just what household items you can use to replace your good old weights. Now before we get into the fun stuff, it's time for a little bit of an update. We've got data, details, the whole works. We'll cut through the fake news and each morning deliver the essential updates that you need to know. Now, yesterday saw a total of 233 cases, 66 linked to known clusters, or 167 pending contact tracing. And whilst the bulk of the cases do come from the dorms, we do need to do our part to stay at home. Home. The more you go out, the higher chance you have of infecting other people and, of course, getting infected yourself. Now, remember, last week the government actually passed a bill prohibiting all social gatherings privately done as well as publicly as well. So just a reminder that if you are thinking of celebrating anyone's birthday this week, you might want to take it on the house party app. Mm, is that hitting a little bit close to home? It's too soon. Uh, someone's got a birthday this week. <laughs> if you are also celebrating your birthday in this Circuit Breaker month, then drop us a note on our Facebook page and we will send you our well wishes. That being said, over 6,000 stern warnings were given out since the 7th of April. And because we faced such high numbers um, of people still going out, they've now removed the initial stern warning and you get slapped with a $300 fine immediately. Ouch. Also, over the weekend, the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore has partnered terminal operator PSA Singapore, Keppel Offshore, and Marine Bibi Maritime Limited, as well as Ascot Limited, to bring in and manage floating accommodation to house our foreign workers. That's amazing because it means there's more safe distancing measures being put in place and a good limit on the spread that we see going on. Okay, that brings us to the end of our daily update. Make sure you join us for the first part of our show, if you're super busy working from home and all that, to ensure that you are up to date on all the latest developments. And coming next week, we're actually going to be bringing the Quick Draw, which is an opportunity for you guys to win some prizes. That's right. So we've got some great prizes that we're going to be giving out from next week onwards. Uh, that'll be happening after each update that we do. So you want to make sure that you stay tuned for that. Um, we've got food vouchers from, from some of our favorite restaurants, mm -hmm. as well as workout gear vouchers to be given out, so that's not something you want to miss. Yeah, definitely. Alrighty, we're going to go for a short break, but stick around, because when we come back, we're going to show you how to stretch it out with Declan Halpin. Don't go away.
morning show, your guide to navigating the new normal, whatever that is looking like to you right now. Now, hopefully you guys tuned in to the workout this morning with that core blast and Pilates session, and hopefully you got a good cool down as well. It's very, very important to cool down, and trust me, your physio is gonna remind you that. But just in case you didn't, or if you're like me and you suffer from some knee pain, some hip pain, or some back pain, in this next segment, we are gonna be helping you out. Well, not exactly me, but this man right here, Declan Halpin, from UFIT, one of the best physios in town. You've been treating me for what? Too years? long, years? too long, Kelly. Too long. <laughs> too long, too many problems. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, physio isn't exactly on the list of essential services and you must be crying at home every day about that uh, because you can't see your patients, but there are still people out there who do need assistance and who may be suffering from a bit more pain than normal because sitting down is not necessarily very good for us, is it? No, I mean, it, sitting down in itself is, is, is okay. It's when we spend a long time sitting down that really causes the problems, um, both for the muscles around your body, but also for, for your heart and for your general health as well. So we really recommend that you don't spend too long sitting down at any one time. Now, the problem is we're not even adding a commute into our working day at the moment. So we're not walking to a train station or a bus stop or walking even a few flights of steps to go up into our, in, into our offices. So that means that we're getting out of bed, rolling to wherever our workstation is and sat down for now like eight, nine hours at a stretch. We'll be lucky if we make it to the fridge. Mm. So what can we do to change that? And, and what if people are getting some back pain? Well, the, the most important thing, the most important thing that you can do is, is to introduce regular breaks into whatever you're doing. Um, and, I, and people always ask me what those regular breaks look like. But, and I always say, just find something that, that you enjoy doing or, or find something that works for your schedule. For some people, it can, be as, uh, it can be as basic as setting a timer next to your, your laptop or next to the TV and making sure that in between every program or in between every, every 30 minutes, you stand up and stretch. For other people, if you have kids, get down on the ground, <laughs> play around with them. It's, it's exercise. If you have a three-year-old, you know exactly what that feels like. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly is, is uh, one that I always tell people is make sure that you drink two to three liters of water a day. Wow. And that will definitely make sure that you're getting up every 20 to 30 minutes to go to the toilet. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to end up spending more time in the toilet. Two to three liters is a lot of water, but we're not exactly sweating it out, are we? Like, Yeah, but that is the recommendation that, that every adult should be drinking a day. And people don't realize that hydration is really, really important for your health and also for your muscles. Um, the, the recommendation from any health professional is two liters of water a day before you do any exercise. So if you do exercise on top of that, you should be hitting at least three liters of water a day for, for your own body. Wow. Okay, so let's get back to the stretches then because people at home, they are in a bit of pain. What sort of exercises do you have? Maybe three stretches that we can do to alleviate any of that. Uh, sure. So when we sit down, um, when we sit down, we're in this, we're usually in this, this, uh, this crouch down position and the areas that we shorten up we our chest is getting not really curved down and our hips are getting really really tight in this area and so when we try and when we get up from that position you often see people stretching out into this position after a couple of hours of sitting so your body is telling you it's literally telling you the areas that you need to be stretching so the first one um, is just getting that upper back people always worry about their neck being in this position when they're looking at the laptop but actually I'm more concerned about what's happening with your upper back getting into that fuse position because your neck sits on that area. So we need to make sure that we're getting nice extension through there. And a really easy way of doing that is just to get a towel that you have at home. Everybody has at home, Tie, really wrap it up nice and tight, put it on the ground and then just sit down, lie down and get that right in the middle of your upper back. And then over that position, just stretch your arms behind you and get a nice curve through that upper back and right. just spend some time there. Now, it looks a little bit like a foam roller when you roll that up there, but obviously not everyone has a foam roller at home. So I guess this is a really great, cheap, fast alternative because we all know that all the fitness stores are sold out of fitness equipment because yeah. suddenly everyone wants to join the Olympics. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so, what else can we do? So the next one uh, is your hip flexors. So we, send, we spend a lot of time sitting in this position and you shorten up in here. And so we wanna get a really nice stretch through the front of the hips. So use your towel again, put it down on the ground so you can protect your knee. Down onto the towel, other leg out in front, and then squeeze. Don't just rock forward from here, because if you see, if you can see here, Kelly, mm. I'm not actually changing the angle of my hip when I do that. 
we want to push our bum forward and lean back to get a really good stretch through the front there and in through that hip right. flexor. I see a lot of people sh would make that problem because a lot of us just get down into that low lunge and then just lean forward. And then if we end up there, then you're right, we're not actually extending yeah. that area. Yeah, exactly. It's a big, you see a lot of people just doing this when they're, when they're out and that's hitting the wrong area, unfortunately. Right, and then the last one, you need a chair, don't we? Yeah, well, the last one is, is, is limiting the problem in itself. So lots of people come to see us with back pain, um, especially when they've been sitting for a long time. And I often talk to them about how to sit properly. And the main thing to do with, with sitting is to make sure that your bum is right up in the back of the chair. When we sit forward into this position, we're not getting any support. And then often what happens is your back goes looking for the support and goes to find the, the back of the chair. So what I recommend people, again, just a towel, sit to the back of your chair and wedge that towel right down into the bottom of your hips and then sit back and you can see what happens to my back immediately is it straightens it up and then ask your friends ask your families tell them to ask them to tell you when you drop out of that position because it's really really important that when you drop into that into that less uh less less healthy position that you just stand up stretch reset your towel and go again you know, when you first told me that we were going to have a towel for this demonstration, I thought you were going to tell me to take the towel and sort of like strap it behind me to make sure that I wasn't sort of like <laughs> slouching forward or anything. But I think it's really good because three different things that you can use with just a towel. Yeah, you know, exactly. It doesn't need any fancy equipment. You don't need to be trying to get any expensive stuff in your home. You can just use whatever you have, right? Exactly. It's the most important thing is, is to build in these habits uh, with things that are around you. And it's the same with, with any sort of exercise that you do. As we were talking about earlier, you don't have to spend a lot of money on, on all sorts of exercise equipment. Just find things around your house to make life easy for yourself. And I guess when you're doing all those stretches, you end up getting a lot more mobility in your body as well. How important is it to be mobile and to have that mobility in your body? Oh, it's really, really important. We've, we've got all of these joints to be able to move and shift around. Um, and, and with our body, unfortunately, if you don't use it, then you lose it. And that's when you're 70, 80 years old and your grandkids come running towards you and you get stuck in this position and you can't bend down and pick them up or you can't help them with their toys or anything like that. So for life, it's really important to keep your mobility as possible. I was just going to say grandkids. Like I get that sometimes with my kid. It's just <laughs> getting heavier. She's 16 kilos now and already like I can, I can feel myself going, oh, Oh, that's not as, maybe as easy as it used to be. Um, so mobility is super important. And I thought I would maybe test your mobility today. You up for a challenge? I'm always up for a challenge. Awesome. OK, so if you have been paying attention to the interwebs and everything that's been going online, you will have maybe come across the tissue paper mobility challenge. Now, we all know we've got lots of tissue paper at home because you all went out and bought all the stock in the stores. So. Declan, heads up, tissue paper. This is what we're gonna be doing. If you haven't seen the challenge yet, or maybe just to refresh those that have seen it, we're gonna take a quick look at this video that I found online, uh, which basically showcases uh, mobility using tissue paper. So let's take a look, if we can pull that up. And essentially what you're gonna be doing is balancing this tissue paper on your <laughs> foot. Okay, so here we go basically balancing that tissue paper on your foot. She makes it look really easy. I was going to say that, I mean, great. Yoga instructor goes okay. first, then so, Declan goes second. This exactly. is going to look great. I mean, you've got to walk the talk, right, Declan? <laughs> so down on the floor, we'll get you just in the center. Well, let's turn around, let's turn around, let's turn oh, around. Sorry. So no one has to, no one no, has to Nobody see wants to see that angle. No. Okay, so uh. do you want some help putting it on your foot? Uh. <laughs> okay, oh, uh. okay. All right. Don't shake now, come on. Okay, I'm gonna put it on the ball of your foot. That might be a little bit easier. Okay, now he's gonna try and roll over. So you gotta extend that hip upwards. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one more go. Wow, this is, uh, this is a lot harder than it looks. Yeah, that lady actually made it look really easy. Do you want some help there? Uh. Okay, let's, let's get that leg straight. And I think it is, but I wasn't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a lot harder than it looks. I'm gonna say that if anybody can do that at home, um, I'm happy to see them for free personal training <laughs> sessions. <laughs>
<laughs> well, no, that well, is... let's say first three people who, yeah. can, who can tag us in that video and, and send that in. I'm happy to see them for a free personal training session because that is impossible. What is up? That's an incredible deal. Okay, <laughs> so we'll give you those details a little bit later, but I want to see you do this challenge. If you haven't tried it, then this is your opportunity. If you have tried it and you've already mastered it, then we want to see how good you actually are. So get online, upload it onto Instagram or Facebook or YouTube and make sure you tag us at Get Active TV. Alrighty, we're going to go off for a short break, but when we return, we've got more things coming your way because if you're like me and boarded in at home with kids and you don't know what to do, don't worry, we've got you covered. We've got all those activities and ideas of how to wear out your child coming right up. show with Kelly and Barbara. Now we're almost one week into Circuit Breaker. Let's sort of just pause and just take stock of how you're feeling at the moment. Barbara? Well, I've uh, spring cleaned my wardrobe, redecorated my room, on my way to becoming a master chef, and also that six pack I've always wanted but never had. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot. You don't actually have kids, right? Because for those of you that do have kids, if you manage to get through week one without killing your kids, um, then yes, rest assured, we're going to be providing you with a little bit of sanity and an opportunity for you to, you know, just pause and work out how you can amuse your kiddos. Now, I am the favorite aunt, despite the fact that I am the only aunt, um, and it does suck that I can't actually see Sienna, but it doesn't stop me from coming up with different ways uh, to make sure that she stays active and amused um, and also to give her a little bit of a break. Absolutely, much needed, I'll tell you that. But before we give you all the tips and tricks, we'll be spreading it out as the days go by. Let me tell you a little bit about how day one of home-based learning went for me. Uh, I believe that Sienna basically watched all of the episodes of Paw Patrol available on Netflix. She now knows how to sing the lyrics to Pup Pup Boogie, and she probably knows all the dance moves as well. So day one went, you ought to be doing a little bit more, that you should have lots more things planned out. So that night after day one, I decided action needed to be taken and that Sienna actually needed to be involved in that process as well. Kids need a schedule. They thrive off these schedules. So I wanted to create one that she could actually have some sort of control over. So I'm gonna be sharing how I did that. And it was very simple actually. So the first quite 
convoluted and there's and you definitely cannot read my handwriting for sure um, it basically broke down uh, Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and then it went from wake up to go to bed at night in half hour blocks or hour blocks um, it was quite convoluted in that sense and I realized that I needed to simplify things a little bit to in order to make sure that I could get it so like I mind map drawing here exactly so we had things like breakfast and wash up having lunch going for a nap and these things that were things that I considered essential things oh, so essentials. essentials yes so we'll have essentials the second thing I wanted to do was to make sure that she was having fun throughout the day. So I had fun things and these sorts of things included arts and crafts, exercising with mummy, uh, or even just having her own time as well. Now the third category was... What was the second? The second was fun time. Oh, fun time. Yes. Oh, that was literally what it's called. Yes, it was called fun time. Fun time. Uh, <laughs> the third thing was learning. And this was because obviously, even though she's only three years old, she's in nursery at the moment and she's learning songs, going through uh, basic her numbers. Is super cute, by the way. Yeah, it's still got a bit of an ang mo chiang, but like we're, <laughs> we're working on that. Um, and then the fourth thing was activities. So I wanted to make sure that she was doing things that were outside the whole learning sphere of an absolute curriculum, but making sure that she was actually learning other things through play. So be it water-based play, be it going out and exploring nature. I just wanted her to have a little bit more fun with it. So after we broke all that down and took down all the things that I wanted to incorporate, um, what I did was I came up with all these little handy dandy um, schedule markers. So I wrote it down on paper and then what I did was I just broke it up and categorized different colors. So all these different colors indicate something else. So like the orange represented something that was an essential. So be it nap, nap time or snack time. And then what I did was every evening, I will sit down with her and let her take charge of what you have to brush your teeth. You, you have, have, have to breakfast. have your nap because that's mummy's sanity time. Um, but she had creativity and flexibility over things like her activity or what she wanted to learn, whether it was she wanted to do songs or whether she wanted to play. So okay, the first thing we're going like, to do. Let's do let's do one day. OK, let's do one day. So the first thing is breakfast. OK, got breakfast. So we've got breakfast there. So that starts right at the top. I mean, sometimes, most yeah. of the time. Then sometimes I need a little bit of time for myself, right? So I part two. Then we'd go into a little bit of learning because by about eight o'clock, that's when she would start going to school normally, right? So she would then have maybe hua yu. And Aww. I would try and incorporate it such that my husband would come in in full Mandarin. Uh, I use Google Translate. Um, so there you go. Uh, so then after hua yu, I like to let her have a little bit of relaxation time. So once you do something like that, then I give her me time. Now I find that me time is quite essential uh, because it enables you to take a break and sort of enjoy yourself a little bit, relax without getting too stressed up, but also it's an opportunity for your kid to have the screen time that they so desire and also to make sure that they can just relax. They've had a little lesson. Their attention spans half an hour tops. So this is a great way to make sure that you're incorporating me time for them and for you and they also feel like they have control over that. Then after we're done, we maybe go back into a little bit of learning. So maybe it's going to be, let's see, maybe we do some songs. And this could be English songs, this could be Chinese songs, um, but she has the flexibility to decide what it is she wants to. Oh, so all the non-negotiables are orange. Yes, all the right. non-negotiables are in orange. How much and of what she gets to eat is within her control as well? Because well, I mean, sometimes when kids go to school, like they have the opportunity to buy their own food or, you know, sometimes... Well, you ask them what they want and then they get the opportunity to choose because then that gives them a feeling of control. We all like to be in control, right? We do. We can't do the things that we normally would do. So by giving them a little bit of control, it gives them the feeling of calm, serenity and schedule. So that's pretty much what the first half of the day would look like. And if you are like me as a parent, you want to 
give yourself a routine so that you know what you're doing, but your child also feels like they have time and flexibility to do what they want as well, then coming up with a schedule is really, really handy dandy. And if you do it the night before, it gives you a little bit of time in the evening to ensure that you can prepare for the next day without feeling overwhelmed and like you need to scrabble for an activity when you're about to go jump on a conference call. That's but good. kids are kids. We were not prepared for this, so take it a day at a time and make sure that you take stock of everything that you're grateful for whilst you're doing it. So which parts exactly is she in control of? She is in control of everything that's non-negotiable. Ah, oh, okay. There you go. So that's great. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a breather. For those of you with the sudden urge to take part in the next Olympic to go about doing it, don't go away. to the morning show, the only show with me, Kelly Latimer. And me, Barbara Latimer, together in the morning. <laughs> Joining us in studio today is active health expert and coach, Christopher Huang. Welcome, Christopher. Thanks. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you for having me here today. Awesome that you could join us on our very first show. Kind of cool. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, so I'm an active health coach and uh, our role as an active health coach is to help people to have ownership of their own health and fitness. And uh, we do it through the four domains. So we have physical activity, we have sleep, we have screen time, and of course, the last one is nutrition. Yeah, so we use our sports science knowledge and also uh, technology to help us to achieve what we want to do. That's pretty awesome. So we've all pretty much jumped on the workout at home bandwagon, um, either coming up with our own stuff or tuning into various hit workouts that are online. So how can we make sure that we are prepared? You know, not everyone is a professional athlete. Um, we don't have, you know, the physical coach there anymore, like guiding us, telling us what to do. So how can we make sure that at home as an individual? I think the most important thing is a warm up and a cool down. Yeah, and these are the parts that people are a little bit confused about it. So while a warm-up, the first one will be increased blood flow to the muscles, to your heart, and that helps to deliver nutrients better. Mm -hmm. And another thing is to increase the elasticity of the tendons and the muscles. Mm. So you can think of a muscle like a rubber band. So when you pull it, it stretches. Um, when you put it in a cold environment, may maybe if you try uh, if you go into a winter country, try to pull it, instead of stretching, it actually snaps. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, so it's not too good. <laughs> yeah, so in a sense, our muscles and tendons are like that. And by warming up, it gets us into a ready, ready position. Uh, in addition, there are also other benefits as well. Mental preparation, there is a better coordination, better technique, better skills, especially if the person hasn't worked out before. Mm. 
mm. I think that's a very good thing to have. So for someone who hasn't worked out before, and like Barbara said, there are so many people who are jumping on the whole sort of like work out from home thing. Um, who do we know who is a good, how do we know who is a good person to follow? Because with everyone just putting out their workouts out there, it's very easy to follow someone who's maybe not an actual certified professional. So in terms of form and all of that, for someone who's never done this before, it's kind of a very... I want to know is whether the person has the skill set. So maybe their background would help. Or maybe if I follow the local authorities, they have the people they find, yeah, they will have to do a background check on them. Or media. Most of these exercises are actually designed for very high level individuals or individuals who have been exercising for a really, really long time. So it might not be very safe for you if you just started. You know what? I was going to say that was your opportunity to plug us, Get Active TV. <laughs> yeah. We have all these workouts for you at 8.30 in the morning at 3 p.m. as well. Like there's so much that you can do and that we have. And I promise you, that they are all health and wellness professionals. Uh, but let's see. Let's don't have too much space to work out. And the hardest part is usually when I warm up, you know, you go for a jog, you go for a run, but at home you can't do that, right? So what kind of uh, warm up can we actually do? So if you don't mind, I can demonstrate one right now. Sure. sure. Yeah, so, so this is a warm up that I myself used to do quite often also. It's called an inch worm. And um, most people, when they're exercising at home, what they have is a lot of exercises that involve pushing, involve the muscles at the front, the mm -hmm. shoulders, the triceps, the chest. So what an inchworm does is actually warms up every forward into a push-up position like this, all right? So try to touch the opposite shoulder with your hand for both sides, and then you come up. You make it look very easy. There was, <laughs> a, lot you, of, there was a lot of good control and form in that <laughs> one. You. Yeah, so a lot of, so you usually do it about 10 times. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least for starters, and if you get better at it, you can even do your own variation of your arm swings. Yeah, so this um, warm up is not so much about just doing the repetitions per se, but usually focus on the quality. Mm. So when I was doing it, try not to make your hips uh, turn around too much, try not to move your body around too much as well. You want to try and keep that core nice and tight and yes, engaged, that's right, right? That's right, yeah. And uh, also, um, like what can you say about the space? Um, one of the things is to make sure there's no hazardous objects around, you know. The last thing you want is to get a little bit dizzy when you're exercising and then you fall and then you hit your head. Yeah, yeah. that's the last thing you want to do right now in this situation. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing would be certain floorings are quite slippery, especially mm. after sweating. So one thing you want to bring is a towel. So personally what I do is I'll get a towel, I lay on the mat and this not only helps to absorb the sweat but it keeps your mat cleaner. So it's actually quite difficult Mm. to clean your mat, uh, especially, um, you know, not everybody has something to clean their mat and their mat might be really, really thick, but mm. towel is simple, you just throw it into the washing machine. Mm. So speaking of, I think before um, all the gyms started closing, a lot of them were putting in place very good measures when it came to constantly disinfecting equipment. We had like towels and everything stashed around. How much of those kind of practices can we now take back to the house? Yeah, so one of the things uh, that uh, when you're going to the gym, you should bring a towel, you should wipe it off before you use it and after you use it. Uh, if I would add one more step, if you have an antibacterial wipe, which uh, Active SG gyms do provide, you can actually do a wipe down before you actually use and after, you know, so that is a good experience for both you and also the participant that's using after that. That's pretty, that's pretty important. I mean, mm. especially we're dealing with a lot of mats. A lot of people have like mats which have um, sort of like a fabric sort of surface yes. to pre prevent that slippy thing. But there are brands which actually have um, sprays. Like mm. I think the one I use at home is from Utama, Utama Spice. Spice yeah. um, and it's actually a yoga mat spray. So it's really good to disinfect. But you can actually make ones at home as well. All you need is like a little bit of tea tree oil, some essential oils that basically have antibacterial properties that are able to disinfect your equipment at home as well, right? Yes, correct. Cool. Well, thank you very much sir, for sharing your insight. Like, I think it's really, really good to see that you guys are doing good work um, and also just helping us navigate that whole working out from home space. I think it's an area where many of us are a little bit unfamiliar. We all know that Decathlon is sold out of all the essential <laughs> equipment that we would want. Um, so to, to know that there are options and to know that we don't actually need very much from the comfort of our home, own home to work up a sweat is really, really good. So Chris, thank you so much for joining no us. No problem, my pleasure, Kelly. Bye We're going to be going for a short break, but don't worry, we will be back with more stuff just for you. Oh! <laughs> 
back to the morning show. I hope that you've been uh, enjoying the little bit of joy that we're bringing to you here with our morning madness. Now, we've seen workouts left, right and center. There mm. are so many of them online, be it here with us or elsewhere. And we're not just working from home. We're also working out from home as well. But unfortunately, with some of the gyms closed, it's just not quite the same, is it? I mean, not everyone has all the equipment that they need. That's right. Now, uh, if you still want to get those gains, because not all of us have weights casually stashed in the closet, um, it's easy. You know, we're going to show you how you can incorporate daily household items and make them into beast machines. Okay, so what have we got here and, and what can we do? Like, I've, I feel like a little bit of a hoarder with this giant sack of rice. <laughs> yes, so uh, a rice can very easily be used as anything from a kettlebell to a dumbbell, regardless of what you're doing. So I'm going to get Kelly to demonstrate, right. um, but she's already holding it. <laughs> um, so for example, if you wanted to do a squat. Yes. So you hug it in nice and tight to your chest. Mm -hmm. Nice and tight. Do a squat and come back up. Okay, so I mean, it's really, really simple. Um, it kind of subs out for your sandbag. Obviously, you don't want to throw your rice just in case it breaks. And say. then <laughs> it's a complete waste. You actually want to eat it. Basmati rice is great, guys. Yep. Uh, overhead press, also quite easily to be done. All right. Single or double, I mean, that's completely up to you. Um, Kelly Hoarder 101 also has a giant can of tomatoes. I make a lot of pasta, okay guys? I make a lot of pasta. Okay, so giant tin of tomatoes. This is a two kilo tin, 2.650 kilos right here. Okay, so what could I so do with this? So for your basic workouts, I would say, you know, you could always go with bicep curls for this one if you're quite broad, it's quite wide, so you can get a good grip with two hands um, anything that you can keep comfortable, really, replacing kettlebells and dumbbells. Kettlebell swings. Your swing. kettlebell swings, um, you can get a nice grip on that. Always make sure you're hinging at the hips, doing a little bit of a thrust forward. Um, we've also got a, a towel. Kelly is going to demonstrate how you can use a towel. Okay. To dab sweat? No. <laughs> to also use it as resistance right. for weights. Okay. So not all of us have resistance bands at home. So. Um, this is what you can do with your towels. This is obviously a new towel because there's fluff going everywhere. Um, but what you can do, say if you wanted to do a little bit of a core exercise, <laughs> so much fluff from here. Okay, I'm gonna take off my shoes. Um, but yeah, so what you would do is you would put your feet just behind your towel and then you can sort of like This is now her towel. Out <laughs> and then pull in, stretch out and pull in and you're actually activating your core. I'm, this is probably not the best chair to be doing this in. <laughs> but as you're doing this, I'm also doing a bicep curl. Yeah, you're pushing and pulling at the same time. My feet as resistance. Oh, this is actually quite hard. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, take a break. And uh, maybe don't use that towel to dab down your sweat. Yeah. Um, all right, and last but not least, I mean, a lot of this have been, um, you know, we see all these workouts and we want to get the movements right and they use heavy things, mm -hmm. okay? So your deadlifts, your, your cleans, your overhead presses, what can we use for that? Easy, you wanna get a bag, all right? So you want to have a bag that you can comfortably grip on both sides. So either by the handles, or even if you wanna grab it on the side, that's absolutely fine. What you do want to do is fill it with lots of things. So I've got some water bottles, which you can also use for your bicep curls, mm -hmm. for your shoulder presses. And here's um, a handy tip. If you are going to use your water bottles, you don't just need to put water in there. You can put rice, you could put sand, you could put anything which has density to it as well. And that would increase the amount of stuff out. Um, I also have books in here. Um, my Word search and Sudoku, that's what I do in my free time. Um, and in order to make sure the weight is evenly distributed, because you don't want, when you're carrying it, if you're holding it, you want to make sure that things aren't going lopsided when you're going into that deadlift. Um, a good way to combat that is to stuff it with towel. You can wrap all your stuff in there, but it just helps to fill out the bag a bit so things aren't being rocked side to side. 
um, and you've got a nice even weight distribution going on. But also, if you are working out from the comfort of your own home, which you all should be, then it also protects your flooring because what you don't want is to have your sharp books or anything with an edge scuffing right. and scratching your floor because can you imagine what your mom is going to say when she finds out that you working out has led to uh, her needing to get a new floor? Essentially. Not so cool. So I think when it comes down to it, the sky is the limit. You can do tons of things. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really up to you. And a child is a great way. I don't know your dinner sort there of challenge, so many right? challenges going on. So many challenges. But this one is an earn your dinner or earn your lunch or whatever. And you basically drop down and you do 50 burpees. Uh, however, Sienna thought it would be a great idea to jump on my back whilst I was doing it. So I think I did about 30 of those burpees with an added 16 kilo weight on my back. I think it's still live on your stories. So yeah. go and check it out because Sienna was basically having the time of her life, sweatiest child there. Um, we are going to take a short You're back on The Morning Show with the Latimer Sisters. Coming up, we've got your mindful morning with Kelly. But first, it's lunchbox time. Now, because we're not too far off from lunch, about an hour or so, we wanted to make sure that you guys are constantly inspired to have different things for your meals and to try and get a good variety of different nutrients inside. Oh. Wow, we jumped right to that, did we? Um, but but yeah, you wanted to have something simple, but sometimes you want to make sure that you're eating the right stuff as well. So in what's in our lunchbox, we're going to be talking to either one of ourselves. It could be the producer's lunchbox, our cameraman's lunchbox. It could be anyone, really. But basically, just to give you guys an idea of what we're going to be eating for our lunch. So we, we thought we'd let everyone off the hook, at least for the for Sure. I am. Oh, that was what I was hearing. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. She needs to eat. Mm -hmm. um, but for real though, um, yeah, let's get into your lunchbox. Okay, so uh, I have in my lunchbox bag from Two Birds. Uh, it's, it's so cute. It says, What's your soup? I'm a girl. What's your superpower? I love that. Um, and our mum is basically a absolute genius in the kitchen. Yeah, she actually is, guys. Like, if you're ever hungry, um, just knock on our front door. Yeah. My mum will feed you. So I brought leftovers from dinner um, and one of the favorite dishes that mum makes, or my favorite dishes, is sesame oil chicken. Mm. It's a super straightforward dish, but I mean, she's got all her kitchen whiz chef knowledge going on. I was gonna on. say kitchen kung fu. Yeah, um, it involves a fair amount of ginger. Um, so, you know, you're, you're getting good nutrients and stuff from that. So I've got, uh, because carbs are life, I've got, some sesame oil chicken um, and also some rice because I love rice. Um, I realized I have absolutely zero vegetables in here. 
<laughs> so I decided to pack some grapes as well, because technically that counts, right? So I've got uh. grapes in the, in the top compartment. Um, but it's a nice warm meal. I mean, I feel like we've, at home, we've kind of dipped into this, because we're eating at home, we tend to have a, oh, that smells really good, sorry. <laughs> uh, we tend to have a heavier lunch nowadays, and then we end up having a lighter dinner. Um, and a lighter dinner means that come morning, I'm more motivated to have breakfast, uh, because I'm already hungry by then. That's true. Yeah, so that's my lunchbox, guys. Awesome. Now, I've actually found that eating my carbs earlier on in the day, so having, having more of my carbs at lunchtime, uh, means that I actually don't get that afternoon carb slump as much because I'm not consuming too many carbs because by the time dinner comes around, like you said, I don't feel like eating all those carbohydrates. But mm. carbohydrates actually get a pretty bad rap. They, a lot of people say, oh no, you should stay away from your carbs. But what we should be aiming to eat is a balanced diet. Mm. So try and get a healthy mix of your proteins, your carbohydrates, your healthy fats, your as vegetables. well as your vegetables, Barbara. <laughs> grapes do not count. Um, but also being mindful about our fruit intake as well. A lot of people think that, yeah, just whack your fruits, right? But actually, fruits have a lot of fructose in them. And if there's one thing that we do want to make sure that we're limiting in our diet is the amount of sugar that we're actually consuming. So especially if you have pre-diabetes, if you have diabetes or other conditions, or if you're looking to shed a little bit of weight, then actually reducing the amount of sugar in your diet is one of the easiest ways to do that. And yes, I know carbohydrates are essentially sugars. But if you're eating them at the right time of day, if you're eating them right after exercise, for example, that is actually something that you can consider implementing uh, in terms of the timing in which you eat. Alrighty, that brings us to the end of Lunchbox. So whatever you're doing, whilst you've been tuning in with us, we'd like you to take a couple of minutes just to sit back, relax, and focus. Now, you don't actually need to see us for this bit. So if you're watching us at this point in time, I'd like you just to close your eyes. So Barbara, I'd like you to just chill out as well. Do you don't, I don't, don't need you for this bit. We just sit close up, do we lean back? You can find what's comfortable for you. So if you're sat down in front of your computer, if you're watching this on the telly, um, or if you're lying down in bed, then I would really like for you to just sit down, relax, and just close your eyes for a little while and just stop whatever it is you're doing. Now, if you've got anything going on in the background, any other noise, your children, the TV, some music, I'd like for you just to tune all of that out. Just focus on my voice. Focus on listening to the things that we're going to be talking through and guiding through as you go out. We've spent the past hour learning about how to take care of your body whilst you're at home. Think a little bit about what we have told you. How you can stretch away those aches. How you can create calm in your chaos. and how you can look after your body and become a better version of yourself. Now I understand that you have a lot of things going on through your mind at this point in time. I understand that there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unease, but now is your time to let that go and just focus on your breath. We're going to take 10 deep breaths together. We're gonna to be inhaling through your nose and then exhaling through your nose as well. Inhale one, exhale two, exhale three, exhale four, Exhale, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And just exhale all of that air 
and as you bring your focus back to the present and as you become more aware of everything that you have ahead of you, just think of three things that you want to achieve today. Three things for you to get done, be it your work, your family, your household. Break it down, focus on those things. And if you have anything that's overwhelming you at this point in time, just come back, take those 10 breaths and then get on with the task at hand. So don't worry about whatever's troubling you at this point in time. We know that Things are a little bit stressful right now, but don't worry. We've got your backs and we will be here to guide you through it as we join you again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our first morning show with Kelly and Barbara. Tomorrow, what's going on? We're going to be stretching it out with Alyssa Cow from the comfort of our beds. Um, and we're also going to be doing a little bit of DIY both for the kiddos and for yourself. So all that and more to look forward to. So make sure you join us at 10 a.m. for all of our shenanigans. 3 p.m. today, though, you can still get your sweat on with Yao Xiang and Kenneth. And you won't even need any weight replacements because it's just your body weight for that one. So we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Stay safe, stay strong, and stay, stay at, at home. home.